Hi, I'm Rick Warden. I play Lieutenant Harry Welsh in Band of Brothers. And 18 years ago today, uh, on the 20th of March 2000, we came here to Longmore Military Training Camp to begin our boot camp training for, uh, for the series. I've become a little bit obsessive and obsessed with uh, coming back to somewhere that I, to be honest, I, I hated at the time and uh, increasingly I love. Uh, I was in that barracks there. And the opportunity arose to bring back some of the actors all this time later. Uh, that's what this film is about. I was in a cadet, so I mean, I've been away to, to camps on a cadet. This one was really good at it. So, you know, the lines Everything seems to happen so quickly. We kind of sort of like got our uniforms on the bus and then here. Uh, action. Oh, man. Isn't it mad? We heard a lot of stories about this place. Yeah, I sort of feel like I've got, um, not memories, but kind of a, an idea of what it was like from the stories and from Ron Livingston's video diary. Um, but seeing it is quite, um, is, is something else, because it's quite, um, it's quite stark. I think Spartan, Spartan doesn't quite do it justice in terms of just how bleak and bare it is. It's really quite, Basic. It's very surreal coming back after all this time. It's this uh, parade every morning yeah. in, the, in these gaps here. It's just difficult to try and sort of think back to that time, what, what I was going through. I mean, I just spent a, a lot of it just bewildered. Always used to sneak in there to try and get more and more food. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, look at it. <laughs> and that, we were, that was our accommodation in there. Macintosh. Macintosh, yeah. I remember, you know, just all piling in here, and I meant the smell was the same. Yeah, smells of feet. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably the bit that brings back the most memories being in, in, in the dorms. Oh my god. <laughs> Who was in here? That was my bunk. Were you? The bed was this way. The bed was here, like this. Oh my god. Kirk. Was he in here? No, no, no Kirk was in the Kirk was in us. No, it was opposite us. Yeah. This is your, you guys, this was me, right here. Done with. 
That would be back over there. Yeah. That's right. And Adam Jones was over there. Where was Kirk? Yeah. Kirk, was, Kirk was here. Kirk was, Kirk was yeah. there. Kirk was there. Yeah. Kirk was there. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. Farmer was there. Yeah. Adam James was, was, was there. Shane? Where was Shane? Yeah. Shane was across the across the way. It comes back to you. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Petty was over there. Uh, Toy was there. Uh, Compton was there. Popeye was there. I was about four or five days late because I was doing a play. And uh, yeah, I showed up in a Mercedes, all comfy, all in my gear. It was lovely. Got driven down here from the front of barracks. <laughs> okay. This guy in uniform comes marching over, he practically rips the Mercedes door open. He's like, get the fuck out of the car! Oh shit, all right, get out. And I stood there and I was stood there like just like an actor. I didn't know what to do, I didn't know whether to hug him, shake his hand, go, hi, I'm Nick, how are you doing? <laughs> you guys are actors that are told you're going to be put for a boot camp. So That's you've it. got a little bit of prep, but you don't think it's going to be, no. Get your fucking ass outside! I had to run all the way here. It was, felt like a couple of miles, it wasn't. He was running behind me, giving me abuse the whole time, telling me how shit I was and you know how short I was and how ugly I was and just properly giving me abuse. Drop your shit, choose a bed. Drop your shit, run back upstairs, outside. He's like, get your soft cover. Run back up. I was like, that's good. What's a soft cover? What's a fucking soft cover? I ran back upstairs, but where's your soft cover? I don't know what it is. <laughs> and he made me run back over to where they were all doing uh, uh, PLFs, parachute landing formation jumps, they're all in a row, and it was like 29 guys just staring. I was a f new kid, just staring at that. None of them saying anything. It was like the dart stopped in midair when I showed up. And they made me stand about 20 yards away, and all on my own, and all the cadre was stood there just looking. One by one, they'd come over, they'd look me up and down. Break you down for the first three or four days uh, with lack of sleep, lots of physical activity, lots of in, get changed out, weapons drills, marching, bombard you with all things military to break you down. And once you've broken down, then build you back up again. Yeah. How many days were we, was it first five or six sure days, we were finish at 1 a.m. and then Reveille was at 0, 0500. Yeah. yeah. It was 0, 06, 0, 05. Yeah. It was 0, 05. Yeah. 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 We're four yeah. hours kept a night yeah. for the first week. Yeah. 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 To be broken down, mm. would have, I probably would have told him to piss off once, once or twice. Yeah, once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But obviously, Captain Dale Die planned it as the OC, officer in command of it. But uh, it was all based on what would we do if we were going for a boot camp in Tacoma. The truth is, I had another job that I had to finish, <clears throat> and uh, I couldn't get off it. I really wanted to be here. Um, because I just thought, you know, it'd be an, an amazing process to go through, and, and I was actually the youngest member of cast, so I, at the time I was 18. I think it forged quite strong bonds because you've got that, uh, you know, that common enemy, which is the, the cadre. If you were the last one to, to turn two, everyone else was doing push-ups, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Punishing transgressions by making everyone else do push-ups, mm. you know, and you know, quite often, you know, they they are clearly pursuing a kind of divide and uh, rule. Um, uh, plan, but uh, the the converse is working as well. We are, you know, the guys are coming closer together because of this common enemy. Start push-ups. Yeah, yeah. 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 <coughs> Anyone did anything wrong in our yeah, yeah. Zone, we all had to get, yeah, we yeah. had to hit the deck. I probably would have hated being told what to do and, and, and shouted at, so I probably would have been quite cheeky and, and give it back, but um, it sounds like a few people did do that, but then they sort of realised that's no joke, really, it's, you know, this is quite serious, so. A lot of it is sort of like blanked out by impact trauma. Being four days in, having, you know, being up at five and then basically working physically and mentally until one o'clock in the morning and then finally getting to go to bed and then five o'clock they're screaming at you again and you're up and you're doing, you're going for a big run before you even get your breakfast. It's flashes of memory and certain things come back and I remember certain events, yeah, sitting on these things. The, this cheap 70s lino that I remember. Two days before you guys joined, this was full of SS. Yes. Because we'd done the German boot camp. Weirdly, I'm having quite a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is, it is though, uh, more cathartic than I'd imagined. Don't know why, I didn't mm. expect anything, so maybe that's why. Oh, oh, that's Seeing the bed and everything in that room and mm. 
remembering the odd bit that I'd forgotten has been nice, actually. Yeah. <laughs> A good thing for us to see. If I say to, to ten guys, right, go occupy beds. You know, if people go straight for the one by the door, they haven't lived in a dorm much because the one by the door is the one where you're going to get disturbed more. But when you don't think about it, yeah. you know, Settle. you know, Matt Settle. Yeah. You know. It's every young lad's dream, isn't it? You know, to be soldier and and play play army and play war. So so doing this process would have been would have been incredible. I just remember these three blocks. This is where I pulled guard duty. This is where we were. This is where we ran from. This is where we did parade out there two, three times a day. This is where we all sat every night for a talk or whatever and in the canteen. And then we're gonna go off and see the, the, the town where we did exercises, which was, I remember just being, I remember it being really cold. So today is exactly the sort of weather it was then. Some people are really um, found the physical aspect of it quite uh, uh, punishing and demanding. I realise now, despite the fact that I really did not enjoy myself, yeah. and obviously psychologically uh, and, and, and mentally, the tiredness and all that was a problem, but, but they really struggled with the physical stuff. One of the best things today, anyway, is coming back, you know, as a grown-up, so yeah, to speak, yeah. uh, compared to how I was then, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. And being around everyone else now, being yeah. able to be themselves, yeah, that's right. Let your guard down, yeah. talk about things, yeah. be yeah. A, a, bit, a bit more human than we were able yeah. to be back then. I think what spurred the memory was you saying about your thermals going missing, and we were out all night in that derelict house, and uh, one of the guys was really cold, and I said, "Look, take my gloves," and uh, and it was either you or Smokey took them, put them on, and then somebody was still shivering, and I can remember saying. I've got no more warm kit, but all I can do is cuddle you. So if you want to cuddle, I'm ready to cuddle. Well, there's, there's other guys who really, the physical stuff wasn't a problem. And I enjoyed the physical element of this. You know, the getting up in the morning, running, and all the, the uh, sort of exercises and stuff we had to do. I really enjoyed all that. But the physical stuff didn't bother me at all. And actually, to be honest, uh, the, the sleep deprivation didn't bother me much either. Right. Because I, I, I was carried by fitness through that, essentially. I remember seeing a, a platoon of paratroopers walking past our position. Yeah. And they were full kit, like, piled above their heads. Yeah, I remember something. And like they that. spotted us from miles away. And we were all dug, dug down. We were like... <laughs> Humour is what gets you through the shit. When I did guard duty in the morning here with Frank downstairs looking out that way, yeah. there were people out this way, and he yeah. had a moment, a good old Frank moment, pretty methody of, I'm telling the fucking up. <laughs> the camaraderie we've built within the 10 days carried us through the whole thing. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> these are real soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> they probably really second like world war yeah, yeah, they've got an SA-80. Oh, it's good to see you, mate. It's good to see Pinky as well, to be honest. I lost some of You mean to be honest, like it's an afterthought. Well, no, at first I was like, oh. and I had ripped my trousers and you taught me how to. Do you, so Do you remember? But then I just remembered that you, you know, you quite. I was funny, here. Quite a funny guy, yeah. You know. <laughs> it's good to see everybody. No, it is. Yeah. The funny thing is. Everybody thinks that I was here. So speak to any of the, any of the actors and, the, and, the, and, the, and I was like, I wasn't at boot camp. They're like, yes, you were. Do people tell stories that in, uh, and include you in them? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I just go with it now, you know. It's just easier. <laughs> we would never have been able to pull off 
what we did with the show if we hadn't done this. <laughs> it's yeah. It's it's an it's an incredible experience, but it's an experience we'll never forget. None of us, and you know, it's a testament to it. 18 years later, and here we are. This morning, it was the most reluctant journey across London that I took. I did not want to come here. It was. I was like, do I really? After all this time. You know, I see the guys. Yeah, it'd be lovely to see Babe because I don't see him very much. It'd be lovely to see Rick. As soon as you see the faces, as soon as I saw your face coming out the tube station, I was like, yeah, I'm really glad I came. <laughs> Tim, I've, I've not seen for. 17 years. You know, we meet today, we start chatting, and, you know, we're, we're getting along famously, and there's a real, I think there's a real shorthand. We then spent eight months together, you know, um, you know, working pretty hard. You know, not that hard, but pretty hard. At that time, you know, my parents were still like, you, you can't do this. What, what are you doing? You need to get a proper job. You are not an actor. You're not well-read. I'm not educated. I'm not anything. And they were just, like, dead against it. Even though I was going, Dad, I'm working for Spielberg, you know. And you just, it just didn't sink on them. I mean, you know, the experience we had overall anyway was incredible. So, you know, the fact that I wasn't here didn't really change it for me, mm. you know. You're here now, man. I'm here now. It'd be amazing if we were all here. That would really be... So I get driven down the Mercedes, all lovely, exciting, off on a film job. I knew they were already there doing boot camp. God, great, it's better meet the cast. It's never going to make the cut, really. no. to be fair. <laughs> I mean, some of those scenes that you've done in the show never made the cut. <laughs> That's it.